didn't hit the camera. <laughs> Roasty. Right now is absolutely the golden era of guitars. Guitars right now are better than they ever have been for the price, for the quality, for the construction, for the tone, for the options, for the finishes. Everything about them is just cooler, better, and the best that they've ever been. So it's a great time. If you're just learning how to play guitar and you're trying to figure out what guitar uh, you should buy, this one needs to be pretty close to the forefront of your mind. That's why I'm super excited to show you this guitar. This is a Sterling by Music Man. This is the Cutlass CT50 HSS. One thing that is worth saying is that this is a sponsored video. Sterling sent me this guitar for free and they are paying for this video. And... They don't get to preview the video before it comes out, and all of the opinions expressed in this video are mine. They belong to me. Uh, they've not been influenced by Sterling. Uh, I'm going to give my honest uh, take on this guitar. Uh, this is the Cutlass CT50. This is the HSS, humbucker, single, single. This is the rose gold finish. It's very purpley, gold, sparkly. It is amazing. Let me run through the features here and then I just want to give you my first impressions and just talk a little bit more about this guitar. So from top to bottom, this guitar is awesome. So poplar body, uh, super cool rose gold finish. It also has a roasted maple neck. How insane is that? So this is maple. This should be a bright white kind of wood, but what they're doing, similar to their acoustic guitars, they are roasting this wood so it gets this beautiful dark finish. So on the back of the headstock, you have locking tuners, and you have that iconic uh, Music Man headstock where you have four and two, which is just such a cool vibe. Uh, moving down on the back of the neck here, there's a five bolt joint on the neck, which is really cool. Uh, it also has a great carve and a great relief up here on the on the heel. So if you are a shredder, you can get your fingers all the way up there uh, to the high frets. On the back of the guitar is a pretty standard tremolo cover. One of the things I really like is this in pin jack. It's very robust, very tough. It's not going to come loose. It's not gonna wiggle and short out and uh, make you wonder if your guitar is broken. Moving to the front of the guitar, uh, you have the truss rod on a spin wheel down here on the front. This is an option. I mean, think about it. In Fender language, you have to get what to the Ultra? You have to spend two thousand above two thousand dollars to get into the truss rod being down here. Now, it is important that it's not at the top of the headstock because that really all the wood you can leave in the t in the headstock will protect it from ever having a neck break. That's why Gibson always has such an issue is that they just hog out so much wood up top. So the truss rod is down here. Now this is a humbucker single single. It does have a vintage style tremolo um, with the bar. 
Very cool. Has rolled saddles as well. Very similar to a kind of a vintage Strat style guitar. So when Sterling reached out and they wanted to send me one of these guitars, I was really excited because I want to give it a three question gear review. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe down below. Uh, but my three question gear reviews are really simple. They are what's good about a thing, what's bad about that thing. And if you're in the market, do I think you should buy this thing? So let's jump in with what's good about this guitar. So when Sterling reached out and they said that they wanted to send me one of these guitars and they wanted to get my take on it, I was super excited because I love this guitar. I love the innovation, the cool, the weird, the different. I love the four and two. I love how the neck heel is different. I love the five bolt neck on the back. I love that it's just simple controls. It's an HSS, so it's super bitey humbucker in the bridge. Everything about this guitar is just cool and taking things I love to the next level. And that's what Ernie Ball and Music Man and all these companies, you can read up on the history. It's pretty dense and pretty complicated. But by and large, basically, Leo Fender, after he left Fender, continued to innovate and make the best guitars that he could. And he continued to believe that the best guitar was still out there. And that's always exciting to me. And I firmly believe that too. And so, so that's where we arrive at this guitar. There are really cool things about this. First, the price. This thing is $500. That is preposterous to me. As I think about how much guitar, I remember spending like $400 on a Dan Electra reissue that wouldn't stay in tune and wouldn't intonate above the third fret. Uh, so this guitar is just so much more. This guitar is like completely on the same quality as 90s Fender American stuff. The absolute most impressive part about this guitar is the fingerboard and the frets. Uh, it feels like a really well-worn, well-built, um, American level guitar. I've played a lot of guitars in the same price range and this is poignantly, significantly different and better. Um, other things that are really cool is the locking tuners are super helpful. It's a very shallow neck angle so the neck goes pretty straight uh, coming out of there. Um, so it's very straight and so having locking tuners where you don't have a ton of brake angle is really helpful and cool. It's a cool added feature. Um, moving back I think other really cool things on this guitar, the bridge is very cool and unique. It's a two point, uh, but it's a very different style than typically a Fender uh, or a comparable kind of guitar would have. I like the simplicity of the controls. I like one volume, one tone and a five way switch. It makes it to where I don't have to think about what tone I want. I just get to kind of dial in, roll down a volume, flip the pickup back. It makes it very approachable for me. The neck heel is super comfortable in the back here. One thing I did find was just that there is a, um, it's not a volume difference as much as it's a gain difference uh, between the bridge pickup and then you move into the middle and the neck position. That's totally to be understandable. What I like also is that the neck pickup is super stratty, super jangly, has a lot of that glassy high end and like full bloomy low end. The bridge is bitey. It's very like Gibson-y. Um, it doesn't, I don't know. I, I think this setup is super cool. If you're looking for a guitar that you're trying to figure out if it's right for you, you should probably not go for super specialized guitars for your first couple guitars. So don't get an Esquire that's just one bitey pickup and doesn't give you any other options. I would go for a guitar that has some, some variation in you know a humbucker and some single coils. Uh, so to me, this guitar makes total sense that you would get something that's just really diverse and really cool. <laughs> We should transition into the things that I think they may have missed. Like what's bad about this guitar? Um, there are a couple things that I do think are a little bit of a miss. The biggest one for me is, and you would not notice this unless you've played lots of guitars, the quality of the knobs and the switch. The switch feels particularly cheap. Um, and that's just one place, you know, that's, that's how things go and that's things you could expect. It's also something you could swap pretty easily if it ever went out. It works totally fine. I have no issues with the functionality, but just from the aesthetic of a player in a guitar that, you know, has so many premium options that there is one thing that does feel a little cheap. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it is something that is worth uh, thinking about and kind of keeping in mind. 
So this guitar didn't come with a floating trim. Uh, you certainly could set it up to float, but I think with a humbucker, with a bridge that you're going to be, if you're really going to be palm muting, you don't want a bridge that can then float back and pull the pitch uh, sharp as you push down on the bridge. I think it's the right call to have it set up the way that it came. Now this guitar overall came set up really well. I haven't had to do anything with it. Uh, I did play this, there's a video. Um, it may come out before this, it may come out after. This guitar was with me in Louisiana before we came back here to Virginia. Um, and I did play this guitar through a 73 Vibra Champ. And one last thing that I don't know if I would call it bad, but it is um, something you need to be aware of. The guitar comes, you saw me unbox it. It came straight out of the box. It does not come with a gig bag so or a case. So that's something you need to keep in mind. You're gonna add, what, 50 to 100 bucks for a case or a gig bag. And um, it's just one of those things. Now, moving into uh, should you buy it, I think this guitar has a gajillion features that make it really helpful for a great beginner. It's a super cool color. It is really cool feature set. It's very customizable, very, uh, you could set it up however you want it to be. The neck is wonderful. I cannot say this enough. It is super comfortable. It's a modern C shape. It is very playable. Uh, the edges of the fretboard are astoundingly smooth and rolled over. You would love this guitar forever. And this is a guitar that could grow and change with you. If you wanted to swap pickups, that's easy and you could do it very quickly. You could learn how to do it yourself. The finish is very cool. Comparing what guitars you could get now to what guitars you could get you know, 10 or 15 years ago, it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. This is the Sterling by Music Man CT50 HSS in rose gold, roasted maple neck. This guitar is a monster, and you would be crazy to not at least think about it. Check it out. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. One last thing. I This video is brought to you by Sterling by Music Man, but also this video and my whole channel does not happen without the support of my patrons. So thank you so much to my ride or die patrons. They're all going to be listed here. Adam, Andy, uh, Tom. Uh, there are so many and I'm so thankful for it. If you want to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash guitar hunter. You get early access to videos. You get cool interactions with me. You get Q and A's. You get uh, just, it's, it's a good life. I try to make it as good as I can for you uh, and to help you become a guitar hunter who fills the world with music and friendship. So have fun. I'll see you later. I'm rusty. I don't know how I'm rusty. I do this all the time.